Howdy folks, Mikey McKernan here, aka Booha Man, aka Is Not Funny Tonight. I have a gig in Ontario, California, Alasais. It's like a Mexican restaurant lounge, formerly a nightclub. Not your ideal comedy spot. This is the second time I'm performing at this venue. Different producers this time. We shall see what it's like. I always like performing in the Inland Empire because that is my hometown. It's where I'm from. I try to want to give hopefully an opportunity for some of my people to come see me at a free show as well. I mean, Wednesday night, can't expect it to be packed house. The first show I did there wasn't really that packed. We'll see what it's like. It's it's by the old airport. It's really funny because it's right off of uh, the 10 freeway and Vineyard Avenue. And that was like growing up, that was my childhood off ramp. Always remember no matter where I was going as a kid, whenever we got off that off ramp, I knew I was so close to home. Unfortunately, I didn't have enough time today to do the wonderful research that I like to do when I go to these towns. But there is a little Mikey McKernan hockey history in Ontario, California. Yes, that is correct. It's where it all began, my hockey career. So we're gonna go check out a couple spots, do a little outdoor investigation. One of them's already closed, so we can't go inside. I'm always kind of timid to be going inside an ice rink anyways, by myself, with a camera. We're gonna try to have some fun. We're gonna film the set. We're gonna try to get some good laughs, and I'll make sure I'll come back and talk about it with you as well. So, let's boogie. We're all started. Welcome to the Ontario Ice Skating Center. Oh my gosh. Ever since I was uh, seven years old, my, well, technically it all started when my mom, somebody got my mom into watching the Los Angeles Kings. So she got into hockey. My mom had a dream of getting her two boys, me and my older brother, into hockey. Seven years old, right here. This is where it all started. I started playing ice hockey in Ontario, California, which is funny because Canada has a place called Ontario. I'm getting heckled right now by kids watching me talk to my camera right now. This is where I was gonna be a little skeptical because there might be kids around, but I don't care. I'm over it. They can deal with it. This is where it all started. I became an Ontario Jet. I don't know how long I was here from. Seven to... Man, I don't remember. There's so many memories here. I'm not going over there. That right there, you can kind of see the ice rink right there, but that building right there, that building used to not be there. That used to be an open field. I remember one time I stepped on a rusted nail right through my sandal. Parents freaked out, thought I had to get a tennis shot. My best friend that I've known for almost 30 years, we met here. So many memories, coming here all the time. I remember being a little kid. One of my favorite things growing up playing hockey was having a sunburn and then going to an ice rink with my shirt off. That was like the best feeling ever. There was a huge group of people just standing outside right in the front. I would love to go inside and walk around, but I'm a shy guy. Plus I'm already getting heckled by kids. They're yelling at me to subscribe. Why don't you do all the hecklers? Why don't you do, 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 do? Well, also because I am on a time crunch, I'm gonna go visit another ice rink because when I stopped playing here, man, I can't remember how old that was. We went over to the Jets. The organization decided to move to Riverside. That's where I was playing at Ice Town. And from Ice Town, I played Long Beach. I was Long Beach Junior Ice Dog for a period. And then we went to another team, which we're gonna go to now. Looks like a team meeting. That's what's going on outside. Man, I've had so many team meetings out here. I've had parents sitting out here waiting. <laughs> oh, it's taking me back. Look at that neon still here. I was scared because it said on the internet that this place was closed, but I had a feeling it'd still be open. Welcome to Ontario Center Ice Arena. This is where my hockey career ended. That's right. I was here as a Ontario Senator. I stopped playing when I was 16 years old. I always want to get the logo in there. A lot of good memories here. Uh, there was a team when we went to States. That was like the biggest thing. I was playing in a it's called Skaha, Southern California Amateur Hockey Association. Seven years old to 16. I owe so much of my childhood to that. So much. Playing hockey taught me everything. Discipline, friendships. So much. So sports was good. Hockey was fun. One of the greatest sports on earth. I can go on all day all about it. This place is a little more chill, so I'm actually going to walk in. Plus, I got to use the bathroom, so let's go check it out. All right. 
Again, parents, kids, everywhere. I don't want to be intruding. I feel out of place. I don't feel welcome. So even though, you know, it's just me reminiscing about my childhood playing hockey. So they're called the Empire. That's pretty cool. I like that. These places, these arenas, they've like they've had their names changed like so many different times. It's always so fun to see. We'll be back here. I'll definitely make a trip to Ontario and we'll do some public session. We'll go ice skating. That'll be fun. I'll show you guys that I still got it, still can skate, still can move. I just wanted to show two buildings that are cornerstones in my childhood. Grew up playing ice hockey in Southern California, which is ironic. I wish I had some nephews who would play in hockey so I can be, you know, I would love to be a part of the hockey life. Learn how to tie skates and stuff. That was, it's funny, growing up playing hockey, I remember one of the biggest accomplishments I had was when I was able to tie my own skates. <laughs> my parents will tell you too all the time, that was, the, one of the happiest days for being a hockey parent was when you can tie your own skates. Well, I'm gonna get out of this parking lot talking to my selfie. Let's go do some comedy. <laughs> Vibe in before the gig. Vibe in before the gig. We are at the venue. It is light in there. It's got the Day of the Dead vibe. I vibes with that. Let's see how it goes. Look at my eye sockets. My eye sockets are so deep. I got so much shadow in my eyes. Don't even know how much time I'm doing to even ask. Not worried about it. There's not that many bodies in there. Luckily, some people just showed up. Ah, uh, 10, 10, 12 people maybe. But hey, what? You know. Buy the ticket, take the ride. I'm always down for it. I kind of knew what I was getting myself into, that this might be a lighter show, a lighter crowd. And they actually mixed up the room. Last time it was towards in the back and I kind of like how they changed it up a little bit, but still it's not the best setup for stand-up, but to me, producing shows and doing it for so long, you're a little picky, you're a little peculiar. There's like one point they should put like a curtain, one area, put the stage there and then make it all open out and even to the bar. It's like you're standing like this and you're performing your left and right, where if you can just perform to the long room, that's where this success is. There's there's a feng shui to stand up. The setup is always super important. I haven't produced a show in a few years, and if I ever did again, I would be absolutely meticulous about the setup. It's gotta be perfect. More than anything, I want amphitheater style. I know it's not like huge, I'm not looking for a huge venue, but if there's anything where we can just have the audience raised. I, if I had my own like a venue space where build your own kind of seating area, I would find bleachers at like old, at old parks and stuff like that and I'd put them in there. Those are fun seating areas for comedy. Plus it's like with a bench, you know, you can pack a bunch of people on it. The show hasn't started yet. Uh, I'm going up maybe third or fourth. Uh, more cars are showing up. I'm gonna try a couple new things because I have to. I have to work on some new things. I need to be listening to the sets and writing down my jokes and do some more writing. I haven't done that in a while because I've obviously been so busy with you. I did listen to one set and I wrote something down, which is always good because I didn't get a chance to listen to more. I have to like spend hours listening to it, but I'm hitting the road again tomorrow. All right, now I'm just rambling, thinking about jokes, but all right. We're gonna have fun. I'm gonna put my comedy face on and do a couple pass. He's an experience, all right? So please do it for, please do it for the very silly Mr. Mikey McKernan. Everybody. Cool. I like to go to Disneyland by myself even though I look like I shouldn't. <laughs> Just saying, it's easier to hit on single writers. I've been disappointing all my hippie friends because they find out I don't have any crystals in my pockets. I'd be more into crystals if I can hang out in their pockets. I got plenty of energy to give. <laughs> Mostly being stoned. Boo, ha, ha. 
Every time I work at a restaurant, I tell the cooks to call me one thing, payaso feo. <laughs> now we say, uh, per que? <laughs> Mi cabeza es a vacía. <laughs> See, it's funny, because the bujas, you know, they could be Spanish, I guess. But... <laughs> There's no language barrier with the catchphrase. All right. Just got done with the spot. That was fun. For a small little crowd, they were small but mighty. I really enjoyed them. The room kind of, because there's like hardwood floors and it, it was a little echoey, not too bad. You can't really hear it, but you can hear it when you're up there. And that was that was kind of like, oh, I don't want to be too loud. And of course, you know, I, I'm always high energy, so I'm going to act like there's more people there. Like, oh, am I being too loud? Is this, is this too much for this environment right now? But it went well. <laughs> I'm gonna pretend this place is bad, so. <laughs> you guys, you're okay with that energy. I did not do any new material, like I said I was gonna do, because I was trying to write some jokes on the fly. I did a local joke. Great to be here, Ontario, California. Everybody from the, everybody from the IE? Who's from the IE? <laughs> Inland Empirates. I grew up in the IE. I still got friends out here who love giving themselves tattoos. My other friend just gave himself 99 tattooed on himself, but he put it on his butt cheeks. So when he spreads his cheeks, he says where he's from. Boo. <laughs> this is what's fun about documenting all this stuff, especially recording every set, is that the lights went out during my set. And of course, I had to roll with that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's... <laughs> the, no, it was... My time was up. That's what that was. This is cool. Now you can see all the faces aren't laughing. This is... This is way better. Do you want me to stall while you fix that? Yes. No problem. All right. Yes, my set just turned into 45 minutes. Congratulations. I kind of do comedy online because of bad connection. <laughs> Zoom. <laughs> I should have done more comedy online because I'm used to crowds being on mute. All right, this was a lot funnier when I was in the light. Yeah, it was. Which is always fun and, you know, and I haven't stalled in a while, so I was kind of like, uh, where am I at? Where am I at? What jokes am I doing? Dur, 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 dur. But all in all, I had fun. It was a good set. I enjoyed it. So shout out to Paul for booking me on this spot. Yo, I got a homie that we're going to talk to. I got someone we got to talk to. I'm here with my boy, Josh Awad. He was on the spot. Josh, how was, how was the show, dude? Um, you know, I was very underwhelmed when I got here, but I had a fun set. I told the girl I was Egyptian, and she said, I thought they were extinct. <laughs> yeah, I, I really wanted to tell her something, but I was like still trying to get with her. <laughs> so I was like, you know what? Most of us are. Only the strongest survived. But that's why I need your help. Uh, we can fix this. <laughs> I was hanging out with my homie, and I call him a homie because he's a minority. <laughs> <laughs> he was not white, you know? Uh, if he was white, I'd probably call him a co-worker. <laughs> I got engaged recently. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, I feel... I'm just... I'm happy for her. I'm glad I came. How long did it take you to get out here? An hour and a half. Yeah, me at, too. At least. Yeah, it took so least, long. Yeah. Brutal. So what about bits that you liked and bits you didn't like? It was a Mexican restaurant called A La Seis. Oh, yeah. And I called it Uno Dos Tres, and that was that was my favorite thing of the night. You just have to be here at Uno Dos Tres. Is that how you say it? <laughs> <laughs> I asked him how to say it before. He's Mexican. That's what he told me. He said Uno Dos Tres. I said it better that time, right? Yeah, that was hilarious. That yeah. was that got me too. I was cracking up. Small audience, I tried to just have fun. Started off some new stuff that I was just 
excited to try. Yeah, I know. I you told know. myself too. I was like, I'm gonna do new stuff, and I totally didn't do any new. Yeah. Stuff. <laughs> I'm trying to be more silly on stage, so you know that's a success right there. Yeah, and it's um, funny because this is not the the room that you would think to kind of get silly, but no, it's not. Let's but, do it. Well, yeah, I know when I did, it's smaller, you're like, all right, I can. I think I can explore. Yeah. Or experiment. But yeah, I did a good mix of new stuff, old stuff, in the room stuff, and then going back to material. Well balanced. Yeah, and you know, I you know I thought I was in a bomb, but I did not bomb. No, you had a good set. I enjoyed I, it. Yeah, so that's good. That's Where can they can find you? Plug um, your stuff at J underscore Awad on Instagram. I, I will follow you back. <laughs> oh, follow back, y'all. Woo woo. Follow, hey. fo- I'm at I'm hey. at I'm at 998 followers. So you know, I come on, we can that. we can get him a thousand. He's yeah. probably gonna get a thousand before so this if comes Mike out. Mike will though. ever follow me back. I'll get that other. one. I follow you, dog. Okay? I follow you to your car, yeah. all right? <laughs> you follow me to my house. Dude, I'm glad we got to do this gig together, man. Yeah, this Thanks. was fun. Thanks and for... you're, you're one of the reasons why I wanted to come out. Like, I was very oh, skeptical about coming out. I'm like, you know, I got a couple homies on this lineup. And yeah, it's, it's fun to do with friends. I, I hit you up to try to carpool, and you're like, no, I just don't like you. <laughs> no, I understand. You had to Log come out in. early. Um, but it's good that, you know, we, we drove separately because we could leave when we want. Yeah, we're and free. We're free to go now. We just, yeah, the show is still going on. I think the audience is being held hostage now, so. Yeah. All right, dude. All right, thank you. Well, that's another night in the books for the old stand-up adventure vlogs. I really do appreciate you folks watching this video till the end. Really, right now, I'm I'm learning. I'm like, oh, you got to subscribe. That's most important. Dude, dude. Watching the videos to the end. That's really important. So if you got into this far, thank you. Thanks for watching. Thanks for clicking, for liking, for commenting, and subscribing. If you want to follow me on Instagram and interact with me, see where my shows are daily, link down below. I have merchandise. I have t-shirts that say Mikey McKern is not funny. I have hoodies that say Mikey McKern is not funny. If you want to buy one, link down below. Website. Where are you, Mikey? Where are you performing next? I try to update the website as much as I possibly can. Link down below. PayPal, link down below if you guys want to donate appreciate any help it's going towards me feeding myself mostly yeah somebody hey shout out to my friend in portland gave me some money and i went grocery shopping immediately (laughs) so i really do appreciate it it's helping thank you one love i can't wait to not get rich doing this